Helldivers 2 has been one of the biggest surprises of the year for me so far. I'm mainly an RPG guy, and I don't play a lot of online shooters. But the gameplay of Helldivers is so insanely fun that I was immediately hooked. But there are a few things that are unclear to noobs like me, so in this video, we're going to cover 10 tips and things I wish I knew before playing Helldivers 2. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, or liberty, and let's dive into the tips. Number 1. The Grenade Launcher is OP in the early game. Your starting gear in Helldivers 2 is very basic, with a lot of the best weapons and stratagems locked behind level progression. One of the first game changers you can unlock at level 5 is the Grenade Launcher. This bad boy is great for taking down spitters, closing bug holes, and clearing smaller mobs. It does start to fall off a bit as you pump up the difficulty, and you'll have better options later on as you unlock more guns like the flamethrower and arc thrower, but the grenade launcher should be one of your top priority unlocks as soon as you reach level 5. Number 2. Don't reload too soon. Ammo inventory in Helldivers 2 is tracked by the clip, not the individual round. So in order to maximize your shots, avoid reloading your gun until your clip is completely empty. As someone who came from Cyberpunk 2077 and Mass Effect, it was very hard to break my habit of reloading at any break in the action. In those games, it's more efficient to reload partially spent clips to make room for more ammo since your max ammo is capped. The exception in Helldivers 2 is any gun that has the rounds reloading passive. For these guns, you can reload mid-clip without wasting ammo. That, and any gun that has unlimited ammo and works on a cooldown, kind of like the first Mass Effect. The only time you'll want to reload a partially spent clip is just before resupplying or picking up spare ammo you find in the field. In this case, you'll end up wasting ammo by not reloading, since your empty or partially empty clip will count towards the max ammo inventory limit. Same thing for stims, by the way, so use a stim before resupplying if you're not at max health. Number 3. Be sure to clear out Stalker Layers Stalkers are one of the most obnoxious and dangerous bug enemies you can encounter in Helldivers 2. For starters, they have an invisibility cloak, making them easy to miss, those sneaky bastards. Second, they are faster than the player. Any other enemy in this game can be outrun, but a stalker can always catch up to you if it's in pursuit. Third, they have this annoying whisper whip attack that can yeet your ass across the battlefield. Although sometimes this is a good thing as it might get you out of danger temporarily. And finally, perhaps the most annoying aspect is that they will run away like a little bitch if you start killing them, only to come back and attack you later. If you spot any stalkers during your mission, this means there is a stalker layer somewhere on the map. You should make it a top priority to track down and close off any stalker bug holes. Trust me, this will save you a lot of hassle as you progress through the mission. Number 4. Don't sleep on the Guard Dog Rover. Every Helldivers 2 player raves about the shield backpack, but don't sleep on the Guard Dog Rover. Your trusty little robot buddy follows you around the map and incinerates your foes with a laser. This works as a great defense tool because the rover will kill many weaker enemies before they can even reach you. Those bitch-ass flying hunters can't sink their claws into you when you've got a rover buddy to cut them down in their tracks. Given enough time, it can even drop some armored enemies. It can't penetrate heavy armor though, but its main purpose is clearing smaller mobs so that you can focus on the bigger targets yourself. My kill count for missions skyrocketed when I started using the rover, since it just passively annihilates stuff while you walk around the battlefield. Number 5. The Flamethrower is ridiculously OP now. In the launch version of Helldivers 2, the Flamethrower was one of the weakest support weapons, but it received a 50% damage buff in a recent update, and now it's one of my favorite ways to clear out mobs of armored enemies. It can even cook chargers into a crispy pile of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> the main drawback to the flamethrower is it can be very easy to catch your teammates on fire or yourself if you're not careful. The flames will spread over grassy areas and burning enemies can catch you on fire as well if they get close enough. If things get a little too hot, be sure to stop, drop, and roll. Or rather dive and stim to keep yourself alive. Number 6. Reinforcement pods are a free airstrike. 
Did you know you can kill Chargers and even Bile Titans by landing on them? If you drop a teammate reinforcement beacon in the vicinity of an elite enemy, they can steer their pod and rain down death from above. Just be sure to communicate with your squad what you're doing, or they might think you're griefing them. Number 7. What to Unlock from the Battle Pass in addition to the premium war bond, Helldivers 2 has a standard free battle pass where you can unlock new items and emotes using war bonds you earn from completing missions. This is the main way you will unlock new primary weapons and armor sets in the game. There are a ton of options to choose from, so you might be wondering what you should unlock first. I recommend gunning for the Breaker Shotgun and AR Liberator Penetrator, the latter of which is capable of piercing medium armor, which is extremely rare for a primary weapon. I also recommend getting the Hellpod Optimization and Vitality Enhancement Boosters. But the most important unlock of all is Finger Guns. Aside from completing missions and clearing optional objectives, the fastest way to get more War Bonds is by doing personal and major orders. These essentially function as daily and weekly missions where you can earn 15 to 30 war bombs a pop. So be sure to do these if you want to speed up your battle pass progression. Number 8. The fastest way to level up. Now, technically the fastest way to gain experience is to complete short solo missions on easy mode. Things like terminate illegal broadcasts could be finished in under 5 minutes and net you thousands of XP per hour. You can check out guides from creators like Dom's Roundtable if you're interested in this specific strategy. The only problem is, this isn't a very fun way to play the game, at least in my opinion. So for most players, the best way to level up fast is to complete the highest difficulty missions you are comfortable with. On difficulty 6 or higher, you can earn over a thousand XP per mission. Complete a few of these, and you'll breeze your way to level 20 in no time, and most likely have more fun than grinding solo easy missions. At level 20, you will be able to unlock any stratagem in the game, with the exception of the brand new Patriot Exosuit. I reached level 20 in a little over 20 hours of gameplay, and I was mostly playing difficulty 5 or 6. I also just did quick play, so I wasn't selecting the fastest or highest XP missions every time. So if you're sweaty, you can certainly do this even faster, but it's not like it takes 50 hours to get the best gear, so my advice is to just enjoy the journey. Number 9. Be very careful with your sentry placement. Gatling and mortar sentries can be very powerful support stratagems capable of defending choke points or extractions. But be very careful where you put them because a misplaced sentry can easily be more of a burden than a support. I've watched countless teammates get blown up by mortar sentries in particular because these things just indiscriminately fire on enemies even if you're nearby. I recommend placing them beyond the edge of whatever you're trying to defend so that you and your teammates are positioned behind the sentries. If you don't know where the enemies will be coming from, it's helpful to wait for the bug breaches to spawn before dropping your sentry. Number 10. Orbital Laser is the best air support stratagem. This bad boy is unlockable at level 15, and it's capable of dropping even the biggest enemies like Bile Titans. Not only is the Orbital Laser really powerful, it also tracks the enemies so you don't have to be super precise with your placement like you do with other air support strats. The only real downside of the laser is it's not an instant kill for Bile Titans and Chargers, so it takes a little while to take them down, and it has a ridiculously long cooldown and limited uses. So you definitely want to use the orbital laser sparingly and only when you really need it. So there you have it. We've explored 10 tips and things I wish I knew before playing Helldivers 2. This game is amazing. It's simultaneously very intuitive, but also has quite a lot of depth with all its weapons and stratagems. What are some tips you'd like to share about Helldivers 2? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG and action game content. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.